It's Christmas, and you've given the whiskey lover in your life a bottle of whiskey every year for the past 10 Christmases. Are you a professional, Santa? This year, you want to mix it up. You want to give them a different spirit of Christmas. That is not the spirit of Christmas. Well, we've got five ideas that someone who likes whiskey is sure to like. That is a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Tequila. We get four tequila shots? No, oh, oh, tequila. Okay. okay. I know what you're thinking. Tequila doesn't need to be like the stuff you remember from university. In fact, like Scotch whiskey, a lot of tequila is aged in ex bourbon barrels. So, someone that likes whiskey, if you get them the right tequila, they're bound to like it. Bon tequila! Agave based spirits like tequila and mezcal age much faster in the barrels than Scotch whiskey because of where they're matured, because it's much hotter in Mexico and South America. So don't be put off if you see low age statements. You'll probably see two different things on the bottles. Repasado, which means that it's been aged for between two months and a year, and Anejo, which means it's been aged for at least one year, but usually longer. Like Scotch whiskey, you can find tequila that's been aged in American bourbon barrels. So it's a really good bet for someone that likes whiskey. Suerte Anejo tequila is a really nice one. For 24 months, Suerte Anejo is rested in charred American white oak whiskey barrels that were used for Jack Daniels. This is twice the minimum amount for normal Anejo tequila, and it's very smooth and drinkable. Another is Casa Amigos Anejo, which has a little vanilla among the leather and barrel spices. This Anejo tequila is aged for 24 months in reconditioned whiskey barrel. It isn't as bright as some of the other tequilas you might try, but this is George Clooney's tequila, and that's kind of cool. Everybody be cool, you be cool. Number two, gin. Now, we're not talking about regular gin here. Gin tonic? We're talking about gin that's been distilled and then matured in oak barrels. This stuff makes for some great cocktails. Would you care for a martini, Mr. Babcock? Well, uh... Dry or extra dry? While barrel-aged gin is creating quite a buzz these days, <laughs> That was a joke. When it comes to today's barrel-aged gin, a lot of distilleries are taking a classical approach using new oak casks, which is similar to how bourbon or rye is made. <laughs> Seattle's Captive Spirits Distilling has two different barrel gins that they make, one called bourbon and one peat. The bourbon uh, is matured in bourbon casks, which gives it a really interesting complexity to the, the spice and the citrus that you get in their normal gin. Stir, never shake, bruises the gin. Few is one of my favorite American bourbons. And Few also makes a gin. On the label, it says, this barrel-aged spirit tastes like gin, but has the maturity of bourbon. How cool is that? Would you care for an olive? Andy Mame says olives take up too much room in such a little glass. As you might expect, the Creative Whiskey Company makes some great whiskeys. That being said, it's not too surprising that the distillery would start to use its barrels to create other spirits. The base spirit in their gin is a London dry style, so think beef eater. Before being laid to rest, the Creative Whiskey Company's space side whiskeys are used to make a really rich and interesting gin. Where did this boy learn to mix it up? Babcock, knowledge is power. Number three, wine. Now, this is a really difficult category, and I'm not going to pretend to be a wine expert. This wine is a new world wine. This wine is from California. This wine is Central Coast. This wine is a Petit Syrah. This wine is from a high quality producer, and it's 2008. It's milk. If you're getting wine for someone that typically drinks Macallan or Glenlivet, getting them a Pinot Noir from Oregon could be a really safe bet. It has similar fruity notes to it. And if you're buying a wine for someone that typically drinks bourbon, 
a really safe bet would be getting them a nice Merlot. Oh, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! The Merlot is going to have that strong oakiness to it. And if it's someone that likes their rye whiskey, so something that's really strong in those rich rye notes, you will absolutely nail it if you get them a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. This Californian wines are all so good. Number four, rum. It's very bad. Steel Jobo's rum. Now, I know that rum has a really bad reputation. Where's the rum? Get the rum, make a cocktail. It's the dregs, the lowest level of the dark spirit category. Starting the rum and coke issue. Couldn't be more confused. It's the stuff that turns your coke alcoholic and turns your morning into regret. Rum! I need rum, lads! Plantation Guiana 2005. It's distilled in a pot still, like Scotch whiskey, and then it's matured in ex bourbon barrels. Again, like Scotch whiskey. In fact, this is so close to a single malt in terms of process that any serious whiskey drinker really should give this a try. Matured for 23 years, Kirk and Sweeney even looks like a whiskey. That's because it's been aged in American oak, which is what gives it this really rich color. The rum itself is like the best dessert whiskey you can have. Toffee, caramel, toasted nuts, vanilla, as well as dried fruits. These are the sorts of tasting notes that you'd normally see with a whiskey. This is a great value, and you'll win some big, big points. I think rum is very bracy. Number five, beer. Hey, give me one of those famous giant beers I heard so much about. There are lots of different great beers you can get that have been matured in bourbon or whiskey barrels but one that I heartily recommend is Innes and Gun. Whenever I'm in Scotland, that is my beer of choice. And it's fairly easy to find. In fact, Innes and Gun is the most popular British bottled beer sold in Canada. Well, that's very specific. The beer was originally developed for William Grant when they were distilling whiskey, but they tried the beer and it was delicious. And so, making Innocent Gun became a product by itself. It is fantastic. If someone likes whiskey and they haven't had Innocent Gun, that is a Christmas gift sort of. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. So there you have it. Five alternative gifts for the whiskey lover in your life. But let's be honest, no one has ever said I've got too much whiskey in my collection. No, I think it's too much for one person. When all else fails, you can probably get another bottle of whiskey. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel. We post a new video every week.